What's up, folks? This is your boy, Darko. Welcome to another edition of Kindles and Kicks. What's up? I'm back at it. I've been away for a couple of weeks, not voluntarily, had some familial and vocational obligations that have kept me from home. So I really haven't been able to record and upload anything for, I guess, over two weeks now. But hopefully things are starting to calm down and I can get back to my regular, you know, cadence and rhythm. So today I'm going to talk about the books I've read since the last monthly recap, which was like either the end of the first week or beginning of the second week of April. And I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what I read and what I plan to read in the very near future. All right, check it out. First was 1984. So technically I didn't read this, I listened to it. And I listened to the exclusive Audible Immersive Edition, which to me is probably the dopest way to listen to 1984 that I can think of. It was very much like a high quality, high production movie, just with no visuals. But you had Andrew Garfield as Winston, the main character, and you had Tom Hardy as Big Brother. And both of them, not surprisingly, killed their performances. I don't think anyone who's never read 1984 should start with this because while it's entertaining, I think the true overall message of 1984 may be lost if you don't read the book first because it's very much like a movie, although it's very true to the text. I think you can get too much engrossed in the acting and the entertainment value of it all instead of what 1984 was about, which is like information suppression and using propaganda to influence the masses and uh, memory alteration and governmental influence and all kind of other things that this book touches on that while the audio version of course captures, but still you get so immersed in the story and the acting and the entertainment that I think the kind of bleak message of 1984 won't hit as hard, but it still makes it more enjoyable if that makes sense. So read the book for a better understanding of 1984, listen to the immersive version for a more enjoyable experience. Okay, so hopefully that clears that up. The next book I read was Recursion by Blake Crouch. And Blake Crouch is one of my favorite science fiction authors. I've loved everything I've read by him so far, which is the Wayward Trying, Wayward Trying, Wayward Pines trilogy. I've also read Dark Matter, and Recursion is the latest book of his I've read, and I enjoyed it from beginning to end. This book plays heavily on the Mandela effect. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Mandela effect, it's when a huge swath of people remember an event or an occurrence, or an object, or a lot of people just remember something that either didn't happen or never existed. Like, and it gets his name from Nelson Mandela because for some reason, a lot of people think that he died years before he actually did. Now, I didn't experience this particular example, but there is an example where a lot of people remember a movie called Shazam starring Sinbad. And I swear to you, I remember this movie. Like, I remember watching it as a kid, but the movie never existed. Something has happened in space time that has alternated our memory and our timeline. So things that we thought existed actually did not exist or no longer exist because of this time manipulation. Well, in any case, in recursion, 
You have a neuroscientist whose mother suffers from Alzheimer's. And this inspires her to cure the disease or find a treatment to restore lost memories. Unfortunately, her discoveries and her invention lead beyond that to the ability to manipulate time using memories. And unfortunately as well, this has devastating effects on the, on the world. I mean, millions upon billions die as a result of this invention. And her and her partner, who is a New York City cop, has to find a way to stop this device from getting in the wrong hands or stop it from being discovered in the first place so they can withstand or prevent all of this devastation from occurring. So it's a dope story. I love to play on the Mandela effect. I don't know if any of you has suffered from it, but I'd like to hear some examples of yours. But I don't care what nobody says, Sinbad was in a movie called Shazam. Tell me I'm lying. Next, I read Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. As some of you may know, I'm on my Malazan journey. This is my third time trying to complete the series. The first time I made it to Midnight Tides, stopped maybe 25% through and gave up. The second time I made it through Dead House Gates and stopped. Now, hopefully I can make it through the entire series, but Unlike the previous two times, I'm taking it slowly. Like I'm trying to do at least one a month instead of all of them back to back. So wish me luck. Anyway, Red Gardens of the Moon. I loved it the first and second time I read it. Loved it even more the third time I read it. I'm not going to say too much because I'm going to point you wherever it shows up here. I'm going to point you to my Malazan Mondays episode one video where I give a pretty in-depth review and overview of Gardens of the Moon. I really encourage everyone to check that out. All I can say is Steven Erickson is one fantasy author who's found the perfect balance between length and succinctness. He's very descriptive, but he's precise. He doesn't waste words. He doesn't waste sentences. And I never get bored or overwhelmed with his prose. Yeah, the amount of characters and sometimes the plots can be overwhelming, but his prose is never dull. He is a brilliant writer and can't wait to see how his writing improves or changes as I make, I make my way through Malazan. So the next book I read was The Veiled Throne by Ken Liu, which is the third book in the Dandelion Dynasty which is a series I'm loving so far. And I think it will possibly end up being one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. Although if I'm being honest, I think the third book might be my least favorite in this series. I'm not sure. I know I didn't like it as much as the second. I definitely didn't like it as much as Wall of Storms. However, that's also like saying I don't like mint chocolate chip as much as I like cookies and cream ice cream because I love both of them, just one not as much as the other. So I, while I loved The Veil Throne, just not as much as Wall of Storms. So The Veil Throne is very different because it no longer focuses on Kuni Garu, who was the main protagonist in the previous two books. It now focuses more on his wife and his children. And that's also the same for those that his family is warring against. So you have the Layuku warriors who the, who are these nomadic tribes that have crossed over the wall of storms to wage war against Kuni Garu's empire. It's now the next generation. Everyone has different ideas and different ideals about their people and how their kingdom or their 
islands or their worlds should be run. And disagreements happen. And sometimes these disagreements lead to battles and wars and more fights and more death. So a lot of that going on in the Veiled Throne. However, it's also a much more slower burn than the previous two books. It's not a lot of action. It's a lot of setup. And also the oddest thing about this book is like, right, like maybe about 62 or 63% into the book, they have this random cooking slash iron chef competition. And while, so I enjoyed that part. I enjoyed it tremendously because it was a nice breakaway from all the political intrigue and war that was going on throughout the rest of the book. However, I think it went on a little too long. They could have they could have trimmed it down a bit, but it was still a very fun part of the story. And to me, it's an example of how no matter what the hell is going on in the world, life goes on in other places. Like, for example, there are wars, genocide, sexual slavery, all these atrocities going on in the world right now. And I'm just here filming a booktube video. So... To me, that was a perfect example. We got all this war and death and millions dying and refugees fleeing and people becoming enslaved all over this world. Meanwhile, where it isn't quite as bad yet, there's a cooking competition. So I thought it was, I, to me, I thought it was a great break in the book. The only thing is it takes up the majority of the second half of the book and it just went on a little too long for me. So if it was trimmed down some, I think it would have been perfect. But otherwise, it's a very fun subplot within the Veiled Throne. And anyway, overall, love the book. Can't wait to read Speaking Bones, which will, I will either start the end of May or beginning of June. And look forward to completing the series. And hopefully it ends well. Um, and it will be one of my favorite series of all time, as I am predicting now. The last book I completed most recently was... Ubik or Ubik by Philip K. Dick. I did this as a buddy read for my bro, Britton, AKA some Oki dude. Um, and this book was great. It's to me, it reminded me of like Flatliners meets the Langoliers by Stephen King, because it plays a lot on death, the meaning of death, is there even a such thing as the afterlife? And if it is, like, what is it like? It also plays heavily on what exactly is the past or the present? Does either exist? And if they do exist, are they different to different people? And it's just a wild story. You have these people who have telepathic and precognition abilities, and you have other people called inertials who can offset these abilities when they're being misused. And so these inertials are called on his mission to stop a bunch of telepaths from infiltrating this company. But things go incredibly wrong and chaos and confusion ensues. And I'll stop there because I don't want to spoil anything else that happens. But Philip, Philip K. Dick, is a mind bender. And when I finished this book, I honestly didn't know what to believe, who was what, what was where, if up was down, if left was right, I'm still, I don't know. And I really enjoyed reading it. And I appreciate Britton with reading along with me. It's always fun to, to read with him and I, you know, bouncing back our thoughts. So Ubik by Philip K. Dick, loved it and look forward to reading more by him. Next, I'm gonna read A Scanner Darkly. I seen the movie, which I thought was phenomenal. So really look forward to reading the book. So as far as what I'm reading for the rest of the month and whenever I update 
you know, my TBR or give a recap. I'm reading Dead House Gates. I just started that this week. And of course, I'm loving it because I loved it the first two times I've read it, just like Gardens of the Moon. And um, I want to read more sci-fi series. I've read a lot of science fiction standalones, but not a lot of series. And so I decided to start the Frakosigan saga. It's been on my CBR for a long time. And recently, Jake Bishop gave glowing reviews about the series and encouraged people to read it. So it kind of sparked my interest and I decided to move it up. So right now I'm reading Shards of Honor, which is one of the first books in the series, depending on how you read it. Apparently there are like three different ways you can read the Frakosigan saga. And this I felt was the best for me. So I'm starting with Shards of Honor and which I think is about the main character's parents, the series main character's parents. So I'll be reading that, Dead House Gates, and and if I can, I'll read Speaking Bones this month, but I'm not sure. So yeah, that was my April slash May TBR slash recap. So hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these books I mentioned and if you liked them or didn't like them. Or hey, if you have any suggestions of books I might like based on what I talked about in this video, because I'm always looking to add things to my TBR, no matter how high it is, because you never know when I may find my next favorite thing, okay? Also, look forward in June, I'll be doing some, some more buddy reads, which I am pretty excited about, but I'll keep you posted on that. This is Darko, Kindles and Kicks. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace. Hello? Is this Kayla?